Hey guys, welcome to the shop. First walkthrough video I've done in a long time. I'm gonna actually put this one up on YouTube as well. Um, kind of show you guys some of the new features, give you a little bit of a inside look at uh, some of the things we don't typically show and uh, just walk you through the features of this thing. Obviously awesome ruby red color, custom request by the customer, but people seem to like it, everybody except my wife. Um, so we may start to uh, offer the ruby red as a color option. Um, this is basically an expedition package. Pretty close, just a few uh, minor details that are different from the expedition package. But um, I tend to let customers pick and choose options a little bit. If they don't want everything that's in the expedition package, and they don't want uh, necessarily some of the things that are in the adventure, sometimes I'll allow some picky choosy customization um, between those as long as it doesn't make my life a living hell um, so anyway let's uh, well, where should we start I guess we'll start at the front I'm gonna go around to the other side so like I said this is uh, the normal uh, normal size XTD if you've emailed me about it the XTD XL is on the way um, we haven't officially released it but the XTD XL is two feet longer than the standard size XTD and that's gonna be coming um, we have limited parts to build a couple of them, so uh, I'm waiting for the right, uh, the right people to come and request those. Um, we'll get a few out, and then we're going to actually officially release uh, the XTD XL. Anyway, back to this thing. So, first off, the tongue box. That's standard on the Expedition package. And inside is the Dometic CFX 375. We'll open this up. You guys have seen this before, nothing groundbreaking, same fridge as we usually install. Dual zone fridge freezer, runs off a 12 volt or 110, and there's a 12 volt outlet in the box that it's plugged into. On top of the box, this is kind of a neat little add-on. This is a Rome 105 liter gear case. It's got a bottle opener, hydraulic props, with the lid and this one has the lid organizer and conveniently it's got the porch light right over the top of it and these porch lights have a uh, touch button in three different brightness settings so there's the Rome gear case shove your uh, forks and knives and whatever in here keep everything organized on the back side There is some room on the back side of the box when the fridge is closed. People ask about that all the time. Not much. Um, there's probably eight inches of usable space. We've got the wall kit for the OVS awning in here. Uh, I've got the crank for the leveling jacks in there. Okay, go back around to the other side. We'll take a peek inside. Now, um, turn Overland Wildlands doors. We started using these. We were able to special order them in black. I know everybody was kind of hemming and hawing over the white. Unfortunately, when we first started using the turnover land stuff, all they had was white. That's their standard, that's what they stock. We ordered black, we had to wait six months, but now we just order six months out every time and just get black. So, black doors. If you haven't seen what's so cool about these doors, I'll show you. They're a two-piece door, so you have the screen portion Right here, there's a bug screen, a bug mesh, and then a security, stainless steel security mesh on this side. This is supposed to be so the bears can't get you. You can keep this closed, and then you can get a lot better airflow than traditional RV doors because the whole door is a screen. So that's pretty cool. They're really sturdy because they're all aluminum. Put those together. The thing that I really like about them and why we really started looking into alternatives from the traditional RV doors is the way that they seal. So if you look here, there's this cam mechanism on top and on bottom. And when you give the handle a quarter twist, it drops these cams down into these receivers and it sucks the door into place. And I'll show you what I mean. So we just close the door. Right there, it's just latching with the striker. Now normally with a normal RV door, that's it. That's all that's sealing it. So if there's gaps in the seal, you're gonna get dust, you might even get water in through there. But these, you close them, and then you give it a 
quarter turn and it sucks in the door up against its seals. So these seal really, really well. Obviously dead bolts and latch locks too, so they're very secure. So inside, that's our standard configuration up front, uh, the normal cubbies. We've got the storage tracks in the floor. That's standard with all the new packages. So you get these storage tra or cargo tracks on the floor with these rings. The rings just pop into place like that. You can throw a uh, you know a couple of totes or a cooler or whatever in here, strap it down so it doesn't uh, go rattling around when you're going down the road. And then when you're ready to lay your mattress out, you just pop these rings out and then you fold your mattress down over the top and you do not even feel these little tracks. Inside here, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Turnoverland windows. I don't know if I've really gone into depth on those, but uh, the same company that makes the doors, Turnoverland, these are the Arctic Turn windows. So to open these, these seal up really well because they've got these uh, four latches all the way around. And then they open up gullwing style. And you hear the clicks there. They have three different open positions. Then a screen comes up from the bottom, locks into place, and a blind that comes down from the top. And obviously you can pick, you could have half screen, half blind, whatever. That's a huge bonus of these windows. Because you can actually have full privacy in here. The other thing about these windows is that they are a dual pane acrylic. So what that means is they're gonna insulate a lot better than a traditional glass window. And also if they catch a rock, they're not gonna shatter. And it may be kind of hard to tell, but you can see how thick that window is. So you get a lot better insulating property out of these windows. Um, let's see. So at the back back here, uh, we have our two cubbies. And then it's been modified to fit this Zero Breeze air conditioner. And that Zero Breeze air conditioner I put up a video of the other day. Um, it's remote uh, operated. It's an actual air conditioner. Um, let me grab the remote here and then I'll turn the inverter on. But just remote operated, it's a normal air conditioner so it's not like a swamp cooler or anything like that. Works really, really well. So that's just built in. Uh, we have a little drop down table so that'll fold up into position. Locks into place. Max fan, uh, that's just standard on adventure and expedition packages. Just crank the handle up and then you can turn it on and you can reverse the fan direction if you want. Uh, over here, we have the thermostat for the Propex, uh, USB and a 110 outlet. Um, if we wanted to turn our furnace on, we just press the flame button, thermostat kicks on, set it to the temp you want, and off you go. All right, I'm gonna go around to the back. Oh, one more thing too about these doors. If you notice back in that cubby, those are insulation panels. So if you look at the door, the door has these little twist locks. This is an add-on for these doors, but you just stick this whole insulation pad up. It rolls down and locks into place. And then that gives you a lot better insulation on these doors, as well as it totally blocks out any light coming through those windows. Uh, out here, we have the shower box and a hot and a cold tap and the shower wand and the shower wand will reach all the way up to the top of the, um, well, right underneath the awning anyway. So that's the shower box. Now that's standard with the expedition package. This here is just the gravity water fill door. Uh, we get asked about this box pretty frequently. That box is just for the uh, two-stage regulator. It's just to protect it so it's not out in the weather. And that's for the propane. All right, we'll go to the back and pop this thing open. So this galley setup is similar to an expedition package, but it's missing a couple of things. So standard expedition package would have a stove here and then this area under here would be a couple of storage drawers and a slide out cutting board that's really the only difference back here but it has the sink it has a on-demand water heater underneath there 
Uh, and this one actually has a 24 gallon water tank, which we're gonna try to do standard because I think we figured out the configuration. So it does require lithium batteries because we need the extra space and the lithiums are a lot smaller, but there is a 24 gallon water tank tucked in behind there inside the dividing wall. Um, so this is all just utility plumbing space underneath here. Uh, we've got storage space up top. This is the back end of our um, air conditioner. So these are the intake and exhaust for the condenser. We basically just, we milled a couple of adapter plates and then uh, attached those here. So that's where your um, exhaust is coming out of for your air conditioner. Condensation for the air conditioner just runs down and runs down into the water tank. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things here that we don't normally get into, but I think uh, some people will find it useful. So this whole back panel here is an access panel and I've already removed the screws to make it a little bit easier for this video, but we'll just pull this panel out. And show you kind of what's going on in the back back here. So this is what we refer to as the utility space. And we do this on all the builds. I mean, sometimes the layout's gonna be a little bit different, but they're all gonna be the same in that you can access basically everything by removing access panels. So what that means is if you wanted to modify anything, so let's say you're kind of a DIY person and you wanna put in an additional 12 volt outlet or something. The backside of this is the wall to the main cabin. So you could drill holes in that, you could attach things here, you could run wiring through and you could connect wiring into the main distribution panels. Um, if anything needs to be replaced, it's really easy because you can get to everything, right? We have our um, MPPT solar controller, which is the high-end um, solar controller. We have our inverter, we have our furnace, water pumps over here. Um, so you can basically get to anything, um, anything that you would ever need to. So that's what's going on back here. Under here, and I'll show you what I mean when I say we need to do lithium in order to do a 24 gallon water tank. So this here is the access panel for the batteries. And there are our batteries. So in here we have twin 100 amp hour lithiums. And what we do is we basically, we take a piece of inch and a half butcher block and we mill this adapter plate out so that that'll sit down uh, on top of the bottom battery. We can run our connections and then that top battery plops down on top of that. And then we strap them all down. So that is right at the end of our 24 gallon water tank, which starts right back there and runs all the way back behind to the back wall on the other side. So it takes up almost the entire width of the trailer. It's pretty big. But uh, with, with lithium battery set up, we can make that work. Main battery switch is just located under here on this guy. And over here, you'll see we just have our light switch and that controls our under counter lights as well as our strip light on the back door and our um, uh, solar display. This is the inverter remote. So I'll turn our inverter on. And then uh, this is just a charging center that has dual USB and a single 12 volt outlet. And then we've got another 110 outlet. Now that our inverter's on, I'll go back around to the interior and turn this guy on. So there is our air conditioner. Turn the little nightlight on. We can adjust speed. We can um, uh, change um, basically like cooling strength, like how much power it's drawing. Um, so these are, these are pretty nice little units. And let's see, what are we forgetting? Obviously our hitch at the back, which is standard on the new packages. Spare tire mount on the side, that's the new standard. I think we've probably shown these to you before, but we actually weld in um, a pair of crossbars into the cab running this way and then we build this spindle that actually bolts right to the cab. So the spare tire is actually bolted to the cab. We have our power input over here, just a regular uh, 110 plug. 
That'll run all the 110 outlets as well as charge the batteries. And then this is an additional solar port. This is something that the customer requested, but that's just an additional solar port. If you wanted to plug in a second panel, just a little portable panel, you can plug it in right there. I'll give you a glimpse of that panel up there. So that's a 190 watt Go Power Eclipse panel. And I don't know if there's anything different about the Eclipse series panel other than being black, which I like. Um, but the Eclipse series kit that we install is what comes with that MPPT controller, which they say harvests 30% more solar energy than a PWM controller. They're more expensive by a couple hundred bucks, but they, uh, I mean, solar is already not super efficient, so if you can get an extra 30% out of it, it's a lot better. Uh, 180 degree OVS awning on the side, and like I said, he has a wall kit for it, so that'll make basically a full enclosure all the way around this thing, uh, which would be nice because that shower's over on this side. And I'll give you a, a shot underneath the trailer. Just a couple of things coming out of the bottom there. It's exhaust and intake for the uh, for the furnace, um, but other than that, it's nice and clean. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it on this. Um, it has a lock and roll hitch, which is standard on adventure and expedition packages. Um, this one that I have on my truck is a fixed four inch lift, but when we deliver them to the customer, uh, we send it out with a three place adjustable. That way, whatever height your tow vehicle is, we can set it to a height that mm, lets it tow level. So yeah, sorry if that was a little long winded for some of you guys, but uh, I haven't made a real in-depth video in a while, so. Wanted to actually show you some of the new stuff. So, all right, thanks guys.